So I'll be having a look at a board from Biostars T-Series. This is a TA790GX B3. So that means it's a 790GX motherboard. It has support for the Phenom 2 X4 processor and DDR3. It also has support for a bunch of other sort of standard features like SATA 2, uh, HD audio, DVI, gigabit, ethernet. And let's have a look at the back. So you can see they've, they're calling out some of their, of their features. So you've got onboard power and reset buttons, Japanese solid capacitors, Okay, something about an overclocking utility, and then default three overclocking modes in the BIOS. Well, that's kind of neat. So they've got some overclocking profiles in the BIOS. The thing about a BIOSTAR board is that you're not going to tend to see a whole lot of unnecessary bells and whistles, but what you do get is a solid board at a very, very reasonable price. So here's the user's manual, which is mostly in English, and then... Uh, I think includes, yeah, includes some, some random stuff, Japanese, Arabic, Russian, Polish, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, and French, and German. But that's only like the index. It doesn't actually include any of the instructions in those languages, so there you go. And then we've got a Drivers and Utilities CD. Okay, download the latest off the Biostar website. Don't bother using that. Then we have one Molex to SATA power adapter two SATA cables that are yellow and one IDE cable and that comes in a nice little uh, cable tie velcro thing that you can use for cable management in your case when you're done installing the motherboard. We've got an IO shield. All right. And then let's get to the motherboard itself. So while the packaging leaves a little bit to be desired, you'll find that like all Biostar boards, once I get the tape off, once I get the tape off, Come off tape. Wow, that's a long piece of tape that they're using, it's, you know, just in case the package flies away. Okay, so once you get the board itself out, it's a fairly sharp, um, sharp looking board. So they've used like a green, orange, and blue color scheme for this one. And so why don't we start with the CPU socket? You've got support for AM3 CPUs, which includes the 965 Black Edition, AMD's current flagship CPU. Okay, then you've got, uh, da, 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 one, two, three, four. I'm not sure how many phases the power design is, but it looks like somewhere between four and five based on how many of these there are. All right, so then we've got con control. We've got support for your typical DDR3 dual channel memory. So four slots for that. And then we have our power connectors in their usual ideal locations with the 24 pin along the right hand edge and the four pin power connector up at the top left. Now in terms of SATA connectors, we've got, see this is the kind of thing this, that you will tend to see a little bit on value boards is that the layouts might not be exactly optimal. So you can see that the top SATA port is actually gonna be covered by a dual slot full length graphics card. Now if you have a single slot graphics card, then you're good to go. You can use all six of the SATA to two connectors but if you do have a dual slot graphics card you can probably only use five of them shouldn't be that big of a deal you got your clear CMOS switch here one IDE port here are your onboard power and reset switches as well as your color-coded front panel switches three USB 2.0 front panel headers I really like that I don't think two is enough because a lot of cases have four front USB and then if you want to even have like a card reader and then and then yeah exactly that's it so if you wanted to have a card reader you wouldn't be able to but if you have three headers you can you have four front USB and a card reader. I love that. So then we've got a floppy connector here. Then in terms of expansion ports, we've got one PCI Express 16X slot, two PCIe 1X slots, and three PCI because again, it's a value board. So you're going to be expecting someone using this as like an upgrader board to have some legacy PCI stuff that they want to carry forward with them. You can see there's a dinky little heat sink on this chipset right here and that's all that's really necessary for it. But then we've got a fairly beefy looking, uh, fairly large heat sink on the actual 790GX chipset itself. So that pretty much, oh no, okay, there's one auxiliary power here. So that's just, I think this is going to be highly optional, okay, so it's only if you're running an extremely high powered graphics card here. Um, and even then you probably don't need to use that. So then on the back, okay, like most 790GX boards, we do have support for onboard graphics. We've got DVI and VGA, and then we have two PS2 ports, four USB, one gigabit ethernet, and then we have support for, wow, okay, I haven't seen a, a board with a 790GX chipset that only has three audio ports, so microphone, headphones, and then I believe that's a line in or line out. And I think you can also use software to configure it for 5.1 with no mic. So thank you for checking out my quick unboxing of the TA790GX B3.